Good morning. Welcome to Life for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're tuning in today. Uh, cap off our week in with time in God's Word in this interactive way. I we just got the Bible, uh, the Bible study books for uh, the next three months or so, especially during my sabbatical. There's this great book called The Proper Distinction Between Law and Gospel. It's not that thick, but it's pretty heavy lifting. Um, And we found a more succinct way of talking about that topic. Right there, that topic. Um, And so the books are in, and we're going to give them to uh, you guys so you can have this wonderful discussion on how long gospel function? What's the detriment if you if you mingle them together? Um, this sounds quite simple, but there's a lot of moving pieces in that. So that's coming up in the in the, the next few months. But the books are in, and we're we're moving towards that. Uh, but let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Good morning, Bev, June, Terry, Diana, John, and Jan. I'm glad you guys are with us today. Let's uh, pull out the YouVersion Bible app and look at the verse of the day. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This this chapter, this chapter is immensely important. This is huge. Uh, The first, uh, the Christians in Corinth doubted whether or not they were going to get a resurrection. They, They were concerned. They didn't quite understand. They thought they'd missed the opportunity. So, uh, portions of various sections of 1 Corinthians 15 will be used in funeral services to remind us of our resurrection on the last day. If you look in the creed, it talks about the resurrection of the body. It's not talking about the resurrection of Jesus' body. That's in the second article of the creed. The third article of the creed is about the Holy Spirit's work in the church. When the creed in the third article mentions the resurrection of the body, it's your body on the last day, if Jesus doesn't come back first. So, if you go back and you read portions of verses 54, 55, 56, before we get to our verse for today, 57, you hear uh, Paul quoting the Old Testament, Death is swallowed up in victory, Isaiah 25, verse 8, and... 55, oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Paul is mocking death. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Okay, so this is what occurs immediately before our text. God has been victorious over these grim forces. But in this most unique way, God has used death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to swallow up death forever. So, Paul is talking this way, but hear hear Isaiah 25, verse 8. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. He will do that. Well, when when, when is that going to happen? It happened in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Death's stinger has has been removed. And so just as death can no longer harm Christ, because he's resurrected, it cannot permanently harm those who are in Christ because they've been transferred the, God has transferred the benefits of Christ's death to us. So <laughs> this is so important. And it is so heavy hitting that what does Paul do next? He, he can't contain himself. He breaks out into a doxology. Pray, thanks be to God. So there, there's another chapter in 1 Corinthians after verse, 50, 
after um, chapter 15. And there's only one more verse to chapter 15. But when Luther was studying chapter 15, he, he got so excited that he didn't even write on chapter 16. He stops with 15. And I, mean, I want to read to you, I want to close with reading to you how excited he gets. After hearing that death no longer has sting, he gets a resurrection, and Paul breaks into doxology. Luther, Luther, Luther can't stop but join Paul. Luther writes, We can join in that song, and in that way always celebrate Easter, praising and extolling God for a victory that was not won or achieved in battle by us, but was presented and given to us by the mercy of God. He sent his son and let him enter the battle and retained the victory. He transferred this victory to us so that we may say it is ours. In faith, until we experience this victory also in our own body, may God help us to that end through the same dear son, to him be glory and honor forever. Amen. That's how he ends the book, his commentary. One of my buddies asked me earlier today, if you were to, to uh, give a new Christian the fewest number of books possible to learn the faith and, and, and rest confidently in the faith, what would you, what would you use? In that? This is a really, really hard question. I said Genesis, Exodus, and Isaiah because Jesus quotes these more than anything else and he quotes the Old Testament more than anyone else in the New even including Paul. Then I'd go with Mark and Romans and then I'd go with 1 Corinthians. This this chapter and, and, and this verse is huge for our comfort, for our joy. All of God Scripture is reaching towards <clears throat> a victory, but it never seems to come. Isaiah 25 verse 8 speaks that God will do these things. He will swallow up death in victory. and victory. And Paul can't contain his joy because thanks be to God, the victory's ours. Ah, oh, that's it. The victory is yours in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh. And so we spend all this time encouraging one another, lifting one another up because we have this joy. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you. Thanks to you for all of these blessings. We, with Paul, cannot contain our joy for the comfort, the peace, the assurance we have that you have transferred your son's victory to us. Overwhelmed by this joy, help us to share it. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The victory is yours. Thanks be to God. Live as though you believe it. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I look forward to seeing you soon.